what's up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number four hundred and eight. We have a fun show planned tonight. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be talking. It's gonna be talking's all about <laughs> the Cascade Crest one hundred that occurred this last weekend. Kim and I caught up on our sleep. Mm-hmm. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to chat with our guest tonight, Angela Couser, who's back on the show to chat about uh, her return to Cascade Crest 100. Uh, mm-hmm. Made a movie documenting her first attempt at Cascade Crest last year. It's an amazing movie. It's on this channel. Uh, I didn't mean to say amazing movie. Like, I did a great job. No, it's but amazing... Angela did a great job. Angela did a great yeah. job. Her story is amazing. And I encourage you to go check out that movie. But tonight, she's going to join us on the show. We're going to chat about her race that happened this last weekend at Cascade Crest. So sit back, relax, everyone. Ginger Runner Live begins now. Ginger Runner. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 408. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy Tuesdays to spend a little bit of it with us. Welcome to the show. Hi, Kim. Hi. How are you? What was that? Well. I am surprised. Hey, oh. oh. How are you doing? Just trying to act natural. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was natural. I'm doing well. Good. Yeah. Uh, we have a very exciting show tonight because we get to welcome our dear friend Angela Couser to the show. Uh, she's been on before after last year's Cascade Crest 100. Cascade Crest occurred this last weekend this year, and Angela ran it. She went back to the race to run another 100 miles because, you know, once is never enough. But she had a lot of goals in mind this year. Um, if you've seen the movie that I did, Behind the Run with Angela Couser, it's on this channel. Uh, it documented her 2021 experience. She finished, uh, spoilers, she finished with 28 seconds to spare. Amazing story. Uh, she's a breast cancer survivor. She's an amazing mom, badass athlete. And the, the movie kind of talks a little bit about that and her story and how she got to that 100-mile distance. She wasn't done with that race. So she came back in 2022 to finish Cascade Crest with more than 28 seconds to spare. So we're going to chat with her tonight about her experience this last weekend, what it was like to uh, to run the race earlier, it's earlier in the season. And also to run the true race. The true course, because yeah. last year's course was a bit different. Uh, but also to approach a race where, you know, you finish with the cutoff so close and your goal being, I want to make that gap bigger. Like, I don't want to finish with 28 seconds to spare. So, like, we're going to talk to her about the lessons and, and the different things that she did that uh, helped her finish this last weekend uh, with time to spare. And I think it's all stuff that we can all learn and implement directly into our racing and our training right now. It's going to be a great story. Can't wait to introduce her. But, of course, uh, we have to introduce Kim first. Kim. Hi. How are you? We already, we already did this I know. a little bit. I'll let you take it away. (laughs) Hi, everyone. Kim Deshima Newberry here, as always. If you're new, come say hi in the chat room. I'll be in there throughout the hour. And of course, if you have questions for our wonderful guest, please ask them in there. Yes. Uh, And before we introduce Angela, of course, we have some individuals that we like to thank at the top of every Ginger Runner Live episode. It is because of them that we're able to do these live streams, not only weekly, Ginger Runner Live, but we do daily live streams as well called Daily Brew. And it is all community-based. It is our GR crew. Thank you, GR Crew. If you would like to join the GR Crew, you can go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner. All tiers have access to some really fun perks. Uh, the $5 per month tier and above uh, get access to our daily brew live streams every single day. They're super fun, community-based stuff. Uh, so if you are a runner from around the world and you're looking for a community of like minded and similarly uh, trained individuals. This crew is amazing and super supportive, inspiring. So consider joining if you haven't already. Two individuals in particular at that top tier, Brian Sands, longtime supporter of all things Ultra. So he doesn't just support this channel. He supports multiple channels and he's just, it's a testament to his character. He's a truly wonderful human being. Thank you, Brian. And Brendan Quarrel, uh, another GR crew member, we are very, very thankful for him. He is uh, come. He comes to us from the land down under. He's our Australian <laughs> contingent. Uh, Brennan's just the funniest dude ever. Super great runner and currently training for the Yu Yang's 100 miler in 2025. Uh, so it's been really fun following his journey. So yeah. those two individuals, thank you so much. And to the whole crew, we appreciate you very much. I would like to welcome to the show uh, once again. Welcome back to the show, mm-hmm. our dear friend and incredibly inspiring crew member slash hundred mile ass kicker. Angela Couser. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Cascade Crest mug? Yeah. Or is this an advertisement? Yeah. Are we getting ready? No <laughs> words needed to be spoke. Uh, for those listening to the podcast, uh, Angela just lifted a mug. Angela just gestured at a coffee bag. <laughs> that has the Cascade Crest logo on it. Hi, Angela. Hi. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> 
Uh, how is the body feeling? So you just, you ran Cascade Crest. It was a warm weekend. It was beautiful weather weekend. But like, how is the body recovering right now? Um, I'm feeling actually pretty good. I, aside from my toes, that was the worst part for me this year. Um, I mean, I'm sore, but I, um, managed to like hike down to Snoqualmie Falls to show my awesome, um, crew captain this year, Meg, um, show, show them the falls and hike back up, even though I was really slow. Um, so that, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good aside from the toes. <laughs> that, I mean, that's great. That's great that you're like pretty good and you're already hiking and getting some miles in and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> after just, Cascade, a, just a little, just, I mean, you know, yeah, but Cascade Crest is super tough and this year was no exception. Uh, temperatures were a little bit hotter and drier and certainly different than what you experienced a bit last year, I imagine. Um, yeah. But I do want to go back a little bit. So let's go back to last year. So last year you finished Cascade Crest with 28 seconds to spare. Uh, what were those days and weeks after that like for you? You knew it was being documented. Your your family was there with you. It's your first time finishing Cascade Crest, but with 28 seconds. So like what sort of going through your mind in those days and weeks after? Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> I, I felt... Um, I don't even know how to describe it. I, I felt very lucky <laughs> for one that I just, I kept thinking how many just tiny things could have gone wrong to make me miss it, you know, or if I, if I decided to even walk for, you know, three more seconds here and there that it, it could have just gone the wrong way and I wouldn't have finished in the time limit. Um, <clears throat> and how like it I wanted, you know, we even had like made these plans with my crew last year to, to like do a little party at the, at the end at Silver Creek before running in the last four miles. And we didn't get to do any of that because we were just like, ah, get to the finish, go, go, go. Right. Uh, so, so it was exciting that I actually finished. I mean, I felt like, you know, on top of the world, but at the same time, like, man, that was whew, so close. And just so a quick reminder that Angela finished with one of the fastest. So the last four miles are like on road, sort of flat. You mm -hmm. come off the mountain and the last four miles are. And it's a different last four miles now. Very slightly different. Last year. Yeah. But Angela ran those last four miles in a split that rivals those who won the race. Like it was yeah. so fast uh, just to get in under that that cut off uh so yeah it's in the movie go check it out with 28 seconds to spare angela did finish last year did you immediately feel a desire to run it again to prove something to yourself or how did the relationship with the race evolve in the time after last year's race so um it actually didn't really start from the 28 seconds thing it was more that um I wanted to run the like the full actual original course and um and also because I am an idiot and I found out that there's there's maybe a special jacket if you run it 10 times <laughs> and different buckles for five and ten years. And so I'm like, oh hmm, I think I think I need to start on down that path. So that kind of got me in and then the the closer it got, I, I was on the wait list for a really long time. I didn't actually get in until I think it was the end of May when I was actually in. So it kind of didn't seem real until then. And then I was mm. like, oh, crap. <laughs> um, and then that's when I kind of was like, OK, I really want to have time at the end. I do not want to go through <laughs> that whole like terrifying episode again. So. So it was the yeah. swag, basically. It's, it's the swag. Yeah. It's, it's always, <laughs> it's always, it's always the swag. I gotta get another mug. Non-spawn. <laughs> gotta get a jacket. Non-spawn. <laughs> I mean, it's. I can imagine. I mean, you worked hard last year, very hard, the entire day. Your, uh, it's not that you were chasing cutoffs or and that kind of thing, but you definitely had to keep moving all day, right? Like it's, it's sort of a consistent pace thing. It's you don't want to fall off the nutrition and and all that sort of stuff just to stay consistent. It was, it was a very tough course last year with the reroute and 
And also just dealing with the last minute changes of the reroute. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everything was sort of up yeah. to the last minute. Um, so yeah. when you found out in May that you got into this year's race, were you immediately thinking, how can I, how can I move faster? Like, did you have any of that strategy at play or were you at this point just like, oh, I got to get my miles up and I kind of have to build the base. And like, did you think more in like a general sense, let's just approach this race as we would any race? It was kind of a little bit of both, I think, because I, I mean, even though I wasn't sure it was actually going to happen, I was still training as if it was going to happen. Um, <clears throat> and I, I actually changed my training strategy a little bit because I'm self coach. I just have, I coach myself. So, <laughs> um, I decided that maybe I didn't need to be running 200 miles a month and maybe that was actually not helping me meet my you know like goals of being faster mm. and just like uh, building that base was great for you know that time of like 2020 when no races were going on and all that but <clears throat> I was like tired all the time you know and yeah. I, I just felt like all my runs were just like blah you know <laughs> so I actually cut back to to around 150 and added in a lot more weight training. I got Sally's uh, playbook app and just started following a lot of her weight workouts and stuff on there. And that seems to have made a big difference for me. Hmm. Um, so I was already doing that. And then, yeah, when I, when I did actually get off the wait list, I started a little more strategy looking at, you know, what, where I was, stopping last year or I mean because I never like you said I never stopped like anywhere I just I keep my feet moving and stuff but I was like why do I have so much stopping time you know <laughs> like yeah. what what was that along the way that that was happening and so I just was my goal this year was to be like much more efficient in the aid stations and to be you know still my friendly self but maybe not like have such long conversations <laughs> 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 you know, I get a little stuck there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, all that stuff. And of course, Matt, he being the numbers guy, my husband that, uh, he is, you know, we started looking at the spreadsheet and, you know, figuring out all the things that we could, we could kind of hone in on there. So, yeah. Cause it's, uh, this is where the conversation I think I'm excited to hear more about is because I think anyone who's approaching a hundred mile distance, it doesn't matter if you're front of the pack or back of the pack. I think there are efficiency things that we can implement into our race efforts that will allow us to get the best out of ourselves. And uh, especially for back of the packers and people who are right up against the cutoffs, like there are legitimate things that you can do to help be more precise, I guess, in aid stations. So we're going to talk with Angela a little bit more about that. Of course, we are live with Angela Kuzier, uh, but Kim has a bunch of questions for Angela from either the live chat or from our Discord server. Kim? Yeah, and just really quickly, I was just going to talk um, to that you are just mentioning, you know, whether you're a back of the packer or, or not working on efficiency and getting through the aid stations. Angela and myself did have uh, several conversations about how it's a little bit different at the back of the pack versus being a mid packer or an elite. You don't have... You don't have the, um, uh, what do you call it? The luxury, luxury yeah. of problem solving for an hour at an aid station. You like we talked about that's that too. like, you know, that's not something that you can do in a race like Cascade Crest. So. Yeah. Angela, Kim and I were talking while you were running on Saturday. I mean, cause you were super first few aid stations that we knew you came through, you were super efficient and Kim reminded me that like back the Packers and mid Packers don't necessarily have the luxury of taking two hours to nap or reset the stomach <laughs> or the things that maybe front of the Packers or sort of uh, mid pack elites um, that they have that ability to sort of, oh, I've got time before cutoff so I can take as much as I need. Back of the Packers right. don't necessarily have that. So it is really a matter of figuring out what do I need? How do I get it in? How do I fix this problem? And that's that's something pretty pretty stout. I'll let you get to a question. Here. Yeah, yeah. Um, question from Slow Man Running. This is from our Discord server. And Slow Man <laughs> Running says, this is now your third 100 miler you have done. What's so special about that distance? And do you think you have at least one more in you? Uh, and Slow Man Running did put a bunch of kangaroo emojis <laughs> after that as can't well. Can't show that. Just can't copy and paste it. But... Uh, so yeah, so what's so special about the 100 mile distance to you? Oh, wow. Um, that's a good question. Thanks, Brendan. Um, it's, uh, man, I, I can't find words more than just like how 
amazing of an adventure it is. I mean, it seems like it it's a hundred miles and you know, it's two days, but it feels like it's almost longer while you're, I mean, and not in a bad way, but just like you're going on this epic journey and you're going, you know, you're, like you said, you're going through all these things. Like you, you have to problem solve and maybe things aren't going great. You're not feeling good and you have to figure out what's going on all while you're still moving. (laughs) You're going through the woods and you're, you know, seeing the sunset and you're in the stars and then you're in the sunrise and it's just I don't know it's like living it's like living a whole life in this microcosm of two days you know and I don't know it just does does something for my soul (laughs) and yes I I definitely have I definitely have more in me especially with kangaroos (laughs) well plus you know you got to get that jacket and you got to get those exactly yeah i mean i gotta get at least eight more now right (laughs) (laughs) so i do want to talk specifics about your your plan going into this so you you talked about spreadsheets and and things like that what did you purposefully choose to do or anticipate doing at this year's race that would allow you to not be right up against the last 28 seconds getting to that finish line like so what how did you personally prepare to, to to finish this with more time so I, I think I went in with more of a, you know, like more mentality of, or less than, less than just finishing. I was like, okay, you know, like I got a, I got a goal this year, at least, at least five minutes or something, you know, I, I wanted a lot more than that, obviously, but um, I was like, how can I cut seconds? Like just anywhere? How, how can I do this? So everything that I tried to prep along the way, I tried to make it as easy as possible for and everybody who was helping me. And um, thank goodness for Meg Chapel taught me last year how to like, you know, make my drop bags and, and all that stuff um, efficient with Kim's suggestions with the Ziplocs and different things. And I mean, I even got flip top bottles so that the, it would be easier at the aid stations for the volunteers to help me. And that was a big hit. <laughs> I will say like all of the volunteers were like, these are the best bottles ever. <laughs> I was like, I know. Right. So, um, yeah. And just having, like, I made sure to, because knowing how sometimes, you know, my stomach gets bad or like last year I was having trouble swallowing things that were like, remotely um like dry or anything so i ended up using a lot more tailwind so i just made sure i had that with me so that i could at least keep getting calories in it was i mean really it was just like a bunch of small things i think that added up it's you know it's also interesting to think that these aid stations early on especially um you can't go too hard early on uh, and you can't rush through things because if you do get behind on calories or you make a mistake like oh i didn't refill this bottle with the right ingredients or whatever if you go out too hard there's all these mistakes that can happen early on that do cause someone to slow down whether that's a nutritional thing a hydration thing or just over exhaustion and when you are up against cutoffs and you finish 28 seconds the year before so how did you approach the front half of the race from a speed perspective? Because you don't want to go out too fast. You don't want to push too hard. Like, how did you find your zone early on? Yeah, that was that was actually um, pretty high in my mind as well. I knew that the front half, like the start, like almost from the beginning was just like up. <laughs> and so um, having that intel was really helpful. So I, I tried to, you know, like do my best power hike, but just maybe 10% less than Mm. what I felt like I could have done. And also because it was just warm, like it was very warm. Even when we started, I had planned to just wear like a, I had a button up short sleeve to go over my tank top and I never even put it on. It was just so hot. Um, And going up those dry peaks and stuff. So, so I just, you know, I try to keep moving well and fast, but without like killing myself at a hundred percent. Cause I was like, okay, I got, I got a lot of miles to go here. Um, and then just, you know, easy 
go in on the downhills as much as I could. Like they're downhills are kind of my specialty. Like I can, I can, I end up passing a lot of people on downhills. And I think it's just because I've trained my quads to withstand that on tiger, like just going down tiger three so many times they're yeah. like, okay, this is what we do. So <laughs> let's get to the life question. Um, I did want to also mention in the front half of the race, Angela's being very efficient and moving very, very well. But there was a couple things that you ran into that ate up a little bit of time. Do you remember what those couple things were? And do you want to talk about them? Um, or do you know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> so I'll refresh my brain, yeah, that's my brain. She's got yeah, my brain's brain. not quite recovered. Angela, you are on a live <laughs> chat show called Ginger or Live. So we, when I was getting word from Stampede early on that a couple of people in the front, I don't know, 10, 15 people, a couple of people had gone off course. Oh, and I was like, oh, yeah. that's interesting because oh. it's actually PCT and, you know, you just kind of follow the blazes and then you get there. Uh, so when I ended up seeing Angela at the halfway mark, she was like, and I did go off course a little bit. <laughs> So do you want to talk about just like oh, that yeah. little minor blip? And then I think the other thing had to do with your poles being left behind. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> now I remember all of this. <laughs> oh, ha, ha. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I was having a bit of a hard time in in the front half with my stomach like I, it wasn't terrible but i wasn't really like eating a lot and i knew i i really needed to be especially in the beginning um so i was trying really hard to eat and i specifically remember like you know i'm going up the ridge on the pct and i'm like trying to open my payday so i can like get <laughs> something in and i i just missed the I just missed the flag and then i was like oh sweet downhill and so i'm just like going downhill and then pretty soon i'm like there's nobody around what there's no flags either and i'm like oh shit. <laughs> uh and so then i was like am i just not seeing people or should i keep going so i got smart and i looked at the map on my watch and realized oh wait i'm not on the pct anymore i'm like going parallel with it but so then I had to go back up the hill <laughs> from whence I came <laughs> and go back to, I found, I found everybody. I started seeing them going up there and I was like, oh, thank God. But that was probably, you know, a good half mile of shenanigans. <laughs> oh, man. And yeah, and uh, that and then, yeah, my polls <laughs> when I when I went through um I think it was Tacoma Pass. Uh, an awesome, you know, aid station volunteer was like, oh, let me take your poles and we'll just put them here. You know, like, we'll make sure you don't leave without them. Well, apparently I was like too quick getting all my stuff because I just started leaving without them. <laughs> and nobody stopped me and then I got, got up the hill about like you know 100 feet and I was like dang it where are my poles so I had to turn around and go get my poles that did wasn't they, that bad did they give you an extra belt buckle for doing the additional miles <laughs> uh I know it's all about the swag I I mean I'm genuinely yeah. curious though we've talked to you know people who have won races we've talked to front of the packers and mid packers and everything like that who go off course uh during races sometimes it happens um this course is very well marked and uh this is all angela's fault uh yeah <laughs> but I, honestly there are sections where the pct crosses fire roads and other like little kind of straggler yeah. go paths and stuff so it is, is it is easy if you're not paying attention to kind of go off a little bit um but i'm genuinely curious how do you get your mind right so you are running this race you know you are up against cutoffs and you're trying to get faster than 28 seconds from the last cutoff i mean that's so far ahead how do you not get in your own brain and go well that's it like i just twice i added additional mileage when i shouldn't have how do you get it right well um it's a lot of self-talk <laughs> and some of it some of it started out not great <laughs> yeah i was just like oh my god it's happening again like this is just gonna happen again and it was I I did I mean honestly for me that's kind of unusual but I I felt that way for for quite some time mm. before I I think I I think I turned it around when I saw my people at Stampede Pass because I 
you know, it, they just gave me the boost I needed and I got a little bit more food and, and like, <laughs> like Kim told me through the night, like if I can get the food, then I can get my mind right. And then everything else will, you know, fall into place. And I think that really helped, but I just, I guess in the moment I was just like, okay, well, I just got to keep moving. I mean, I'm going to get yeah. as far as I can get and right. just, you know, I'm not stopping. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a tough place, you know, to dig yourself out, but you you did it, you know. It's it's something that I f I think everyone will find themselves in that place at some point, right? It's the uh, either I went off course and I got to get back on, and oh, this just ruined my race, or I didn't do something right with nutrition. This is going to ruin my race. We just talked to Luke Nelson last week about mm -hmm. this at Hard Rock, where early on he yeah. knew he made a mistake early on with water and hydration, and it just it made the later miles very difficult and he knew it was going to happen. So it's sort of like mm -hmm. 20 miles from now, I know I'm going to be in the tank and it's going to be awful, but yeah. like, let's just keep pushing. <laughs> yeah. And that's what you did. Like you just kept pushing one foot in front of the other. Uh, lots of life the best day ever. Best day ever. <laughs> best day ever. Best day ever. <laughs> best day ever. <laughs> uh, question from Heather Reed and Heather asks, what part of the race did you feel you were stronger this year than last? And was there a part of the race that did not go as planned? And how did you deal with that? That's a good question too. Thanks, Heather. Um, <clears throat> so, so what, as I was saying, um, my, I think my stomach issues in the first half were really frustrating for me because I don't normally have that issue either. Like I usually have basically a stomach of steel when I'm running. I'm like, man, I can eat whatever I want. You know, I'm it's an old timey and... news guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, you see. <laughs> And this time I was just like rolling into aid stations and they're like, we have all this amazing stuff. And I'm like, oh, not, that all looks sick. Gross. <laughs> Get it away. <laughs> and I was just like, more tailwind for me. <laughs> um, so that was, you know, that that part was a little tougher than I was imagining. And then um, I think the part that went better for me actually this year was the second half. I, I feel like I, I knew it better. Um, I mean, obviously, because I ran it last year, but I had also gone up there a few times with um, my good friend, Darren, and um, who also finished the race. Congrats, Darren. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and we, you know, we went on trail from hell when we we're fully awake and <laughs> up No Name Ridge. So I was like, okay, like I, I could get my mind right for that. And then um, I just felt much more awake as well. I think I got a couple extra hours of sleep this year before the race. And that really, really helped because I never felt like in that sort of groggy, weird place where I got last year where, I mean, I knew I had to keep moving and stuff, but I just felt like I was super out of it. And this year I was like, I was in it the whole time. And I, so like coming down Silver Creek, I felt really, really strong there. I mean, you look super strong too. I mean, all day. And that's always what I love about your running, Angela, is that even when shits hit the fan, like when you came into Hayek, we were expecting because you'd had uh, some stomach issues earlier on and going off course and these sort of like mental hurdles that you'd have to overcome. We were sort of expecting you to roll into Hayek with a little bit of like a, all right, I just kind of got a rally, you know, that sort of I'm behind, a <laughs> little worry in there. But I mean, talk about you being able to overcome anything it's it, you approach things with just so much joy it's like yeah i had a bad day but no big deal you know we got miles ahead and it's going to be great <laughs> everything from here on is going to be great even though things are going bad they're going to go great like but it was a little bit of that like for us who were waiting for you at hayek is kind of like okay well angela might come in a little rough but we're still going to have to push her out here pretty fast <laughs> like, how's that gonna go <laughs> so <laughs> Having documented Angela's run in 2021, knowing Angela's personal goal this year was to beat her time from last year, even though it was, you know, beautiful for the movie. And like, Angela didn't plan it, but in my head, I'm going, this is amazing. You know, like tearing and crying up last year. Uh, knowing what we witnessed last year and Angela's goal this year to be faster than that. Uh, Kim and I were sort of talking about like, how can we improve uh, or at least help assist Angela in, in how can I bully Angela out of these aid stations faster <laughs> so now my question Angela it's not to you it's to Kim because oh. you brought Kim on as a pacer 
and as part of your crew uh, to get you from Hayek, which is about the halfway point of this course, to uh, we, to the campground, to yeah. Kachis Lake Campground, basically, which is a uh, 15 to 18 miles ish, one big climb, one big descent. Yeah. So Kim. How did you approach the Hayek section? How did you help Angela out? And what was it like pacing Angela for 15, what I'm imagining, joyous miles? What was it like? Oh. Well, okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> I have paced you a number of times. I've paced other friends also. Uh, when I'm given a job for a race for somebody I care about, I take it very seriously. <laughs> Uh, and I did say to you a couple times, you, Ethan, a couple times during Cascade Crest that I felt like I was probably the bad guy of the team because <laughs> I was very much like, here's the timeline we need to give, like, I'm going to verbally tell you you have three minutes and yeah. we need to leave. <laughs> so I'm pretty, I get pretty stern and not everybody is like that and not everybody likes that. <laughs> I like it because I don't want to think, do. I don't yeah. want to think of when I roll into an A station, I don't want to think about anything other mm -hmm. than just putting food or water. And yeah. I want you to tell me to get out. Like, I don't want to pay attention to the clock or math. And right? we pace people or not pace, but we've crewed people like Gary Robbins where time is a time sensitive thing. And he's so dialed that he's like, you set a timer when I get in yep. and the, this is how many minutes I have. So that's kind of ingrained in me. Yeah. So what was it like and at Hayek for you then? So again, like we weren't really quite sure the condition that Angela was going to come in. Right. And I also knew that I w in order for her to make the cutoff after the campground, based on our previous year's splits, I had done all the math and I knew the la latest possible time that I need to get her to the campground. Right. So in order to get her to the campground at the latest possible time, I wanted to create like a window. So that kind of meant not spending the 35 minutes that was spent there last year and trying to like multitask. And Meg, who was Angela's crew and Matt did a fantastic job. So the plan was Angela rolls in, I'm taking Angela so she can go get changed and they were gonna like do everything with their bag so we could just get out of there as quickly Efficiency. as possible. Yeah. yeah. And it, everything worked well. Like Angela wasn't like, I don't want to leave or where's my coffee? Um, I want to lay down and nap. Uh, I'm an old timey radio host still. Keep going back to that voice. It's just how Angela sounds in my head. <laughs> I'm mile 55 of 100. Uh, so I talk at races. <laughs> yeah. So so I think I can't remember our total time at Hayek, but it was it was we cut your time at least in half from the previous year. Yep. But there was a time where you're kind of sitting in the chair, like fiddling with your shoes. And I was like, we're leaving in three minutes minutes like we, we gotta go um and you did and you're great and so pacing angela was really fun for me it's angela and i have run a lot of longer runs together and it's always very casual and taking lots of photos and like a lot of laughing yeah. and stuff like that um but i had a mission and i had a mission of when i wanted to arrive at the campground of angela so my goal well, I had Angela over the ridge was kind of assess to see how Angela was doing, to see how she was feeling, to see how she was eating and to see how much I could get out of her over that ridge. And of course, you know, Angela's just very stout, very seasoned. And there's a little bit of compromise and negotiation in the first couple miles of like, you know, I need you to just try eating something. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately what Angela took with her out of the aid station was not appealing and like you know we ran into another issue where her pack the zipper on the back got stuck down and um but we did end up finding food and Angela did start eating and at that point I was like I think I can push I safely push um so it wasn't a detriment later on but right. and we did like we cooked up that ridge uh, and I will say we got to the upper aid station or the, the Ridge aid station, Angela proudly announced they're flip tops. They're like, they're not... <laughs> that was um, probably like probably all day. You were telling people they're, they're flip tops. tops. Cause I think she told me at one point, I was like, I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we spent like just a couple minutes to try and fix the pack up there and get some food and then down the Ridge. And honestly, I think you ran the majority of that descent. There was a few kind of walk breaks that we took, but yeah, it was great. We got, I was texting with you throughout yeah. to let you know how we were doing. And, uh, I think you banked 35 minutes. So like you predicted what you told me your window of arrival, it was faster than that by about 30 to 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was a fantastic effort. And on that was like, based on the fact that like when, you, when Angela arrived at Hayek, I yeah. was like, you know, if it could, it might take this long, but 
A, the A goal is this. And we came in under that A goal, which was pretty cool. So now my question to Angela, <laughs> because I think this, this is the bigger question. I think anyone who's attempting a hundred mile race or a hundred K, those are most of the two distances that allow pacers. Uh, but this could go really, this could apply to anyone who's going to have a crew at a race. Uh, it could be any distance. How do you choose who's going to be with you? And in this case, was Kim the right piece of the puzzle at the right time? Or was it like, do you regret bringing her on? <laughs> like, I know how easygoing you are. So I, I, I know that you just are out there having fun. I also fully realize that I'm a little bit of a different person when I pace somebody. If I know they have an objective. A goal in and mind. My objective was to make sure that after... Angela left us at the campground that there wasn't the issue of like I only have 28 seconds and that you were still friends and that we were still friends so, so Angela like yeah how do you how do you one how do you pick the right crew how do you communicate with them here's what I want here's what I need here's what you can give and sort of balance that and then was Kim the right ingredient for the recipe the answer is yes but <laughs> or, wanna, no, or, <laughs> or it's no, no. <laughs> but seriously I, I do want to hear this part of it from you yeah that's a good question um <clears throat> so um so this year like like kim said we've been running a lot together and we've done a lot of long runs and we, you know it's always fun and we enjoy each other's company i think <laughs> um <clears throat> and so that was that was a big reason obviously why i wanted you know wanted to have her as a pacer because i knew we would have fun and um i knew like last year that section it was a little monotonous because it, and it was it was a little bit different this year too like having the sunrise be there because last year it was just dark like the whole time and right. it was just like i'm um, just on this forest service road and like uh, trying to get up and so um that made that did make a bit of a difference but um i also knew you know that Kim knew my goals and we had talked a lot about it while we were running and I know that she's experienced and had done this before for you and other people and so um <clears throat> yeah so that was a big thing I also didn't ask her to do the full thing with me because of her upcoming <laughs> race and I didn't want to trash her for that so <laughs> so I thought okay I'll have her in the short section <laughs> um <clears throat> and yes uh she was the perfect pacer i mean i couldn't have asked for anything better i i needed i needed the ass kick up you know to get up there and out and it felt it felt like very gentle ass kicking <laughs> <laughs> um i liked it i was like i was like okay like like you said like i was kind of just like get in that groove of like okay tell me what to do you know like and i will just i'll just do it i just i need i need that right now and and I did get a lot more back on track with food and all that stuff. And it just felt, it felt a lot shorter than last year. It was almost mm -hmm. like very, I was, I was like, wow, we're here already. How did that happen? <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. And it was, it felt amazing too, to be there with so much time. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Okay. Maybe, maybe this is possible. That was actually when I started thinking maybe, maybe it's possible that I won't end up on the line <laughs> at the end. The, I mean, there's, there's, there's strategy in who you pick for your team, for your pacing and, and all that stuff. And there's a level of communication and openness that you need to have with these individuals. Even if you're, they're your best friends and you run with them all the time, there is like, you need to communicate. I'm of the mindset where a race kind of changes people. Like you could be in a really dark place at mile 55 and you need to be, you need to have the right team there to kind of reassemble Humpty Dumpty, right? And mm -hmm. you've chosen, a of course, an amazing squad. Like, of course, there's Matt, there's Meg, there's Jack, there's Kim. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you have this amazing Sam. team. Sam, of course. Sam is like the <laughs> consistent hero yeah. of the equation. All the, the hugs always work. Always. Uh, Sam is Angela's <laughs> son. Um, but this last section of the race is uh, what I would like to say the toughest. Uh, there was a question earlier in regards to what's the course like? What, what sort of explain the course? Uh, there's some really wonderful single track of the PCT, kind of buttery smooth. There's some big climbs, long climbs. There's a rope section. There's a tunnel section. Uh, there's some fire road sections. But this last 25-ish miles are 
they're very difficult. There's the Trail from it's Hell. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Uh, trail from Hell, the Cardiac Needles, Mount Thorpe, which is the highest point of the course, and this rutted out, technical, dusty descent to French uh, from French Cabin down to Silver Creek. So how did you tackle this last section? Because I know that it can be so easy to stop and take photos. It can. It, it is just so beautiful, and the sunrise is coming up. And <laughs> there's lots of things that make you want to go slow. The hills are taunting and steep, and there's so many factors lots coming. Lots of wildflowers to. Lots you know. of wildflowers to like roll in, and great aid stations, and all that kind of thing. How did you manage to stay on it? Because it worked. So this year, how did how did you uh, tackle this section? So, um, so. Like I said earlier, going back there on Trail from Hell and up No Name Ridge when just for a training run, when I was fully awake, I feel like it gave me like a new perspective on that part and that I really needed because in my memory, it was this like super daunting, like, oh shit, you know, like that slowed me down so much last year on mm -hmm. the Trail from Hell, like not knowing how to cross the streams and like where to go. And um, so I felt more confident in just knowing how I was going to get through that part. Um, <clears throat> and, and Jack was amazing because I, I don't know if he had a timer set or what he was doing either, but he had me just pretty much on his schedule too. Like he would be like, have you drank lately? How much, have, you know, have you tried to eat something? <laughs> just like keeping me on track with, with calories and, and like, Hey, you know, maybe we can do a little yog here. And I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> just like, I'm very suggestible. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so he really helped me, you know, get down that. And once again, I felt like on the trail from hell, it just seemed like that went so much faster too. And I was like, wow, we're already at Mineral Creek. How did that happen? Um, and uh, yeah, and getting up No Name Ridge too, that just, that also seemed quicker, even though I don't know, I don't know that it even was, but it just did, none of it seemed as terrible as I remembered it. It is funny because you crushed it like this last section the last <laughs> half of cascade crest while the first half might have been tough i mean the whole race is tough but the first half might have been enough to like set you back mentally you have the stomach issues things that normally are totally dialed aren't dialed the going, toes too. the toes you know you i remember you switched your shoes at hayak because you were having toe issues it seemed to have helped but you have all these things going not wrong but are that are enough to get anyone off their game in the first half of 100 miles. And the last half seemed like everything was sort of ticking off, right? Um, any advice for people who might be tackling their first 100 or their 10th 100, uh, where the first half may not go according to plan, but the second half can still go according to plan? Like Any advice on how to sort of tackle the mental hurdles that they will encounter in these types of scenarios? That's a good question too. Um, <clears throat> I think like what I like to try to tell myself, even in like the lowest spots. And I had a conversation with a guy that I ran with for a long time during the race. We talked about this because his daughter had cancer and we just like really made a connection um, <clears throat> that, you know, just like life, ultras have ebbs and flows. And it's not always going to stay bad. It's you're. It's eventually going to change. You're. You're either. You are going to decide like today's not the day, or you're going to keep going. And you know, for me, like I so far have not had a DNF, and I think it's partially because I'm just stubborn, and I'm like I know that you know in life when shit gets hard, I can't stop and. So it's kind of, I try to have that same philosophy when I'm running, unless, I, I mean, you know, unless I like really hurt myself or something, then I wouldn't want to keep like breaking myself further. But um, yeah, I just know like, well, if I just keep putting one foot in the front, of, in front of the other, like I, I'm still going to feel sick if I stop. So I might as well keep going. I'm still going to, you know, my toes are still going to hurt <laughs> if I stop. So I might as well just change my shoes and go. <laughs> so I, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it does take a strong mental game, but you have to like practice, practice the positive self-talk, I think is, is a big 
part of it for me. I finally just talking about positive, positive things, positive outcomes. Um, you mentioned something to me at the start of the race before you even set off. And I was genuinely curious in regards to the movie and the telling of your story, because you have one of the most inspiring stories that we've ever witnessed. Uh, breast cancer survivor, very rare cancer, but you you got through it and you've been running every day and, and tackling these huge challenges. Um, what what has it been like since your story has been told and people have watched it and have been drawn to it and you get to communicate with other people who have daughters, sisters, mothers, uh, wives or partners or anyone that's um, had to deal with cancer? How have they communicated to you and how has it been for you sort of now? Uh, this sort of icon? <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> it's been really, really good. <laughs> I, I I don't even know how, how else to say it. Like, I, I think that I, I think I needed it more than I knew. I think it's been really cathartic for me and people have been so amazing. I mean, the community, like, I, I don't know what I was expecting. I think I was a little bit afraid that maybe, you know, there'd be trolls or, you know, whatever. I mean, people on the internet can be mean. And, um, I haven't had any of that at all. Everyone who has messaged me and talked to me and, you know, told me their stories. And like I said, you know, meeting people at, during the race, before the race, I had people coming up to me, you know, asking to get pictures with me. And was, I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> I feel like I guess this is what it's like to be a celebrity. <laughs> I don't know. But, but it also feels really special, you know, like I somehow my story and sharing my life with people could make even a little bit of a difference. And it, it makes me really emotional. I mean, you know, because I was... <laughs> I I got got tears before the race even started, but I didn't again until the end. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's been. I mean, truly, it it was a gift to me, and as much as I hope, you know, it has been for other people, and that's what I've heard from so many amazing people. So, well, you continue to be an inspiration to so many, Angela. Maybe some who haven't spoken to you yet, or maybe some uh, some that will someday reach out, but. You really are uh, a testament to the human spirit, to the strength that we all have within us, and the fact that we can all do hard things and succeed at them. And I think this last Cascade Crest is another testament to to your strength. You know, you finish with twenty eight seconds to spare, and anyone, any normal person would be like, "Wow, that's amazing!" Like I finish with twenty eight seconds to spare, and I think I'm good. Uh, <laughs> But your willingness to put yourself back out there and to push yourself again, it's hard when you are at those cutoffs in the back of the pack, like you're trying to beat the longest day, right? The longest clock out there. And you did. And this last year, you finished with 30 minutes to spare. That's enough time to get a car wash. That's enough time to get a, a massage, like a, like a half hour massage. Half, exactly, a half hour massage. That's enough time to get like lunch at Veggie Grill or someplace really delicious. Uh, it's almost enough time for a Costco trip. But like Angela, you... I mean, I could have let you sit around Hayek for those 30 minutes. <laughs> you did it. You did it. And I... I am so stoked for you. Are you hoping to go back again and like cut off another 30 minutes or are you just like, where, where's your mind at now? Full send. Full send. Full send. I had that in my head coming down Silver Creek too. Full send. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, like now that I've got a couple of days to, you know, think about it. Uh, Cause like that first night I was just like, Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, it was amazing. But like, do I really want to do that again? And of course, you know, by the I wake up the next day and I'm like, I think I can do another half hour. I think I can probably do this. <laughs> I can I have strategies cooking already. <laughs> yeah, there was a moment at Hayek where she actually stopped and made pasta. She like boiled pasta. And I was like, I'm gonna I gotta do this right. Garlic first, tomato. Forage the mushrooms for it. I gotta get the right chanterelles, gotta yeah. wait for them to ripen. <laughs> And like that's time that she can shave off next year. So like I'm pretty excited for next year, Angela. 
<laughs> she's actually playing this out in her yeah, head like, like oh, wait did actually, i do that yeah. did, did that i actually happen? forge <laughs> Uh, I didn't even take a picture of a mushroom because I was like, okay, I don't have time for this. <laughs> yeah, did you take photos? I the, so the only photos I took, I took maybe like I don't know, 10 photos in the first half and you know, because I just hadn't been there before and um oh, I also did the little um extra out and back to Cole uh was that called Cole Butte? Cole Butte. The, the lookout the thing. View. So, so that uh, that also added a little extra. But I got my little wooden coin, and I had to take pictures of that, you know, amazing view up there. And um, and then my one like a sadness from last year about my phone being dead was that I did not get a picture from the top of Thorpe like just my own picture for my yeah. own thing. So, so this year that was really something like I wanted to do. And so I didn't take any pictures at all so that my phone would not be dead by the time I got up there. And then I took like 10 pictures up there. So amazing. That was about it though. I, I don't have many more. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of pictures of Angela's back. They're beautiful photos. <laughs> like the sunrise though, the sunrise amazing. on that section looked amazing. I will like also the clouds say, rolling in. I did take, uh, yes. Angela and I, when we run together, we take a lot of photos because we see a lot of very cool things. <laughs> yeah. uh, and when I did start pacing Angela, I was like, oh my God, there's bear grass. It was pitch black out. I see like these two straggly pieces of bear grass that look past. It's like a wildflower, yeah. high alpine. And I was like, I need to take a picture. So I'm like trying to take a picture in the dark and the picture is terrible. Cause I was like, this is, if, I, if this is the only bear grass we see, I need to take a photo. Uh, we ended up seeing what I think was all of the bear grass in West, all Western of Washington, Washington state. Every single one. Uh, yeah, we ended up seeing, and I didn't take a single picture of like the, <laughs> the massive fields yeah. of bear grass. you got back to the car you're like i saw so much bear grass i was like oh you've been you've been wanting to see that you're like yeah and i didn't take a photo of it <laughs> but you saw all of it like fields yeah, of it fields of it uh angela amazing. you're an yeah. amazing human we're so thankful to have you as a friend a crew member and just just being here inspiring so many people i do want to give you a chance though to let people know um usually we like to say where can people follow you and stuff on social media i will say that because you are on instagram and stuff like that but also any words of encouragement for those who maybe are thinking about tackling something hard but are maybe trepidatious about it some words from angela sure um <clears throat> i think <sighs> let's see um i think maybe my best advice would be you know, just take it one step at a time. Um, ask for help because <laughs> people want to help you and um, it, it, it will make your experience so much better when you have people on your team. The, the whole thing, it'll just be that much more special if, if people are there with you. Um, and, you know, just know, like, if I can do it, <laughs> And I'm like back of the pack, you know, total just mom, regular person, then you can do it. I mean, if, if I can do it, anybody can do this stuff. You just you just have to plan it and want it and, you know, keep positive and and get there. Love it. Our guest tonight, Angela Couser. You can find her on social media. Um, ba Run Geek or B.A. Run Geek. <laughs> Angela, what is it? Like badass, badass. run geek, right? <laughs> but every time badass. I see it, it's like ba run geek. <laughs> ba run geek. All <laughs> right. Thanks, Angela. Uh, our guest tonight has been the incredible Angela Couser. There is a movie about her run in 2021 at Cascade Crest on the channel. It's called Behind the Run, Angela Couser. Uh, can't miss it. It's the one that's featured on the channel itself. But she did a fantastic job this last weekend. Also, quick shout out or your crew you member leave that alone. i will leave that alone we like to recognize <laughs> members of the gr crew every single week we call it our gr crew member of the week kim is going to take it away and tell us who this week's gr crew members are very quickly before i get to gr crew member of the week i do want to give a shout out to elizabeth glenn who is in the chat room who uh 
ha had uh, just finished uh, Cascade Crest just prior to Angela, was really grinding it out. We saw Elizabeth, we saw you come through uh, Silver Creek. You finished. Congratulations. Awesome. Good job. And for the GR crew members of the week, um, I just want to recognize the folks that were out at Cascade Crest this weekend, and I'm probably going to miss some. If I do, I apologize. But shout out, of course, to Angela, our wonderful guest tonight. Darren, good friend of ours, who also crushed Cascade Crest. Uh, Amanda, who towed the line, which is hard enough to do at this particular race and also uh the crew and support team for these folks so nicole another crew member austin of course meg and jack amazing amazing work all around and to those who ran or finished congratulations to you we are so appreciative of this community again if you'd like to join the gr crew all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner all tiers get access to some great perks including tonight all levels get access to our after show, which is what we're going to do right after this. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to Ginger Runner Live episode number 408. Mm -hmm. Let me get the right title screen up here. I think this is it. There should be a little lower third that pops up. There it is. Oh, there it is. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode, everybody. We hope you are getting out there, training hard, racing harder, and partnering the hardest. We're going to move right into the after show uh, right now. Thanks, all. We'll see you next week for more. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye. Change.